So when it comes to slicking your hair back, there's a number of things you have to take into consideration. One, it's the type of hair you have and why do you want to slick your hair back? You know, are you looking for a very polished type of formal look, which means you have to use a pomade? Are you looking for something that's very, very high shine, something that's more of like a severe parting but goes over this way? You see a lot of like, you know, in GQ magazine, you'll see a lot of guys wearing tuxes, very, very formal, that classic pomade look. That's one thing that works best really on thick hair types. And you know, the way the, the best way to do that really is to apply the product or the pomade while the hair is dry. So you can comb it in and work the shape into the style. Now I'm not gonna put any pomade on this mannequin because I'm not really looking to do that. But with the pomade in the hair, you then brush it back into place and the hair will stay like that when using pomade. I do have a pomade called Ice. It's actually a really, really good pomade. Uh, and we do have some left on the website. So usually when I'm looking to slick the hair back, you can do it in two ways. You can have the hair where it's damp and then you apply the styling product to the hair and really the product depends on what, what type of hold you want and the type of finish you're looking for. But to me, when you are looking to do that, you need to use something, I'd say more cream-based or you know, like a light paste or something that goes to the hair very, very easily. The second option is when the hair is fully dry like this and you want to apply the product when the hair is completely dry so that it pretty much is getting the instant results. You know, when the hair is wet, it's like when you're cutting hair that's wet compared to dry. When the hair is wet, it's gonna react very differently um, when applying product to com when compared to applying it when it's dry. Dry, you're gonna get those instant results and you know what you're gonna get. When the hair's wet, it still has and needs time to dry, right? The actual hair itself needs time to dry and then with the product on it, it may dry a bit flatter, it may dry differently than what you're expecting. Next thing you know, you need to know is the tools you need when it comes to using the different types of combs or brushes. Let's scoot this mannequin head over a little bit. So we've got, you know, three different types. One, this is a hair cutting comb. I do sell these on my website. You've got the fine teeth here and the wide teeth here. The fine teeth really is going to give you the closest type of hair pattern, right? And the, the tightest as far as like how close together the hair is when you comb it back. It's very, very bunched together. You're not gonna see really many layers or anything in the hair. It's really very, very slick back and very tight as far as how the hair is bunched together. If you use the Y teeth, right? The Y teeth of the comb, when you comb back, you can see it's creating a bit more separation in through here. So if you, if you don't wanna have that separation, and you want the hair to be a bit more solid, then I would suggest using the fine teeth. Fine teeth like this do have a tendency to, I would say rip the hairs out, but pull more hairs out uh, as opposed to the wide teeth. This is a wide tooth comb. As you can see here, look at the separation we're getting. This is if you want a lot of detail, you really, really wanna show those layers and, and you want some separation. The problem with this, and it's not really a problem, but you know, what's gonna happen is when you do these wide, use these wide tooth combs and you put product in the hair, as it dries, you're gonna see the separation, okay? It's gonna dry like this. So if you don't want your hair to look like it's got different layers in it or it's separated, and especially if you've got hair that's a bit on the finer side, it's gonna make it look like it's, you know, you're thinning a bit because it's separating all that hair, I would steer clear of something like this. But it is good for thicker hair types. If you do want to see a bit more of that texture and separation, then you've got my anti-static vent brush, which is really an amazing brush. And that is also good for coming back. You are going to get some separation, but the bristles here are not as wide as a wide tooth comb. So this is kind of a good in-between. You know, you will get a really, really good result with this, especially if you're looking for some sort of a, like a pompadour or something. This really gets the hair nice and shaped. A little bit of separation, not a whole lot, but this is a really, really good brush, especially when the hair is a bit longer. So when it comes to the products, you know, I tend to use like my crafted 
uh, pre-styling product or my styling cream, blow dry cream. This is a really, really good product because it gets through the hair very, very easily and uh, it's, it's, it has a nice matte finish to it. So what I like to do is work it into the, palm, not the palms yet, I work it through the fingertips because I'm applying the product with my fingers like this. I'm raking it through to get it through the hair. If I use my palms like this, I'm just matting it. The fingers actually allows you to rake the product through. And I always like to start in the front because people see you face on, they're not looking at you from the back of your head. So I like to get the product in towards the front first and then I work the product back. So I'll then go back in and start to kind of work the shape in, work the product in from a different, a few different angles and I'm using my fingers. So let's talk about your fingers as a tool. Your hands, your fingers make a great styling type of brush, right? <laughs> if you want to call it a brush. But what you can see here is this to me gives it the most natural type of look when it comes to slicking back your hair like this, right? You can mold it right into place. It's going to stay. It's going to have a good finish to it. And even if the hair is a bit longer, you know, there you go. It's good to go. Now let's take that same product which we have in the hair and let's use the wide tooth comb. And as you can see, we're combing the hair back nice and easily and we're getting just a little bit of that separation. All right, nothing too crazy, but this may cause the hair to split just a little bit, not too much, but you are going to get a tighter type of combing pattern because your fingers, you're really sp spreading the fingers out to rake it back where this is a bit more controlled. So you are going to get a closer uh, styling pattern of the hair. Then let's use a, a fine tooth comb, right? Like so. And if you need to, don't be afraid to apply some more product to the hair, especially if you've got thicker hair. And what I like to do is I'll apply the product like this, get it into the hair. And then what you can do is comb it through the hair. Okay. So while it's still wet, it's still in the hair, not fully absorbed in, you could take the fine teeth, but you see what happens right away with the fine teeth because of the, the pattern of how the teeth are put together. It's so close. You're going to get a lot of resistance sometimes, and then you end up ripping, you know, or, or pulling the hair out. So that's where it becomes a bit, you know, a bit kind of more challenging and more difficult, right? But what you are going to see is that it's, there's no separation whatsoever or barely anything if that, right? And that's when it tends to look a bit more matted and a bit more closer uh, to the head. So what I like to do is I'll hold the hair down like so and I'll comb through it. So I'm using my finger kind of like as a support base so that I can comb the hair so it's not being ripped or pulled, right? Almost like if you're doing like finger waves or something like that. So I'm using my finger to direct and support the combing. And as you can see here, it's a lot tighter as far as uh, the way the hair goes. Now let's use the wider tooth or the wider teeth on this comb. It's going through the hair much, much easier, but now we're starting to get a little more separation and it doesn't look as matted to the head, which is, which is a great look if you're looking for that. And then lastly, let's use the vent brush. Here we go. This is getting really, really right through the hair, but you do have to be careful, <coughs> excuse me, is because you can start to brush the product out, right? I have been combing through this a number of times, but uh, with using this brush, it is going to separate the hair a bit more, even though it's still tight, but it's got a nice kind of finish to it, nice look, you know, compared to using, again, once again, this, you're going to see now the separation and the hair may start to kind of collapse a little bit because you are breaking the hair up and you're separating it a lot more. So, um, but this to me has a bit more of a natural finish. My favorite, honestly, depending on the kind of look you want is your hands because you're going to get the most volume. You know, you can work through the sides this way, but with the hands, you're going to get that volume because you're lifting from the root and it to me comes out a lot better and a lot more natural looking. So let's try the same thing on a mannequin that's got uh, shorter hair, right? You may see this a bit more. So same exact thing. You're looking for that slick back. Let's take some product 
like this, and we're going to do a bunch of pumps into the hand. Now, don't be afraid to apply the product and, and be generous with it because you do want the, the product to go through the hair. And as you can see, I'm just working this in with the fingertips because the fingertips, right, the fingertips is what's going to allow the product to get through. All right, if I were to work this from back to front, the majority of the product would go right into the back of the head first and I wouldn't have any product to get to the front. Again, you're facing somebody, you want to see this. You're not talking to someone from the back of your head, right? This is the first part that people see on you. So you want this to look the best, okay? Then you can slowly work that into shape. But as you can see with my fingers, I'm able to create some lift. I'm able to create some volume through here. I can also control and direct the hair pattern of how I want this to go over. Now you can see it's kind of going over a bit uh, towards this direction. If I wanted it to go the opposite direction, you know, and, and with some products you may not have that much time, right, because the product may dry very, very quickly. So you may not have that time to, uh, to style it in. You, you only have a, maybe like less than a minute because the product dries so fast. So you have to really be sure of the kind of look that you want before you even do anything. So now let's try with this and let's get a little more of a side part going on here. Let's go over this way. Now again, this is the crafted uh, blow dryer style cream, which is an amazing, amazing product. And I think it works wonderfully. And you could also now work towards the front, but don't forget, this is a styling tool. So you can use this right, to get some, some volume in through here. So say you want to have a little bit of an arch or a little bit of a kind of overhang this way. Well, there you go. You can use this to pull down some pieces like so, but also get that volume in through here and you just lift and work the hair around this way to get that, that kind of volume in through here. So really what it comes down to, to wrap this video up is that you know the tools are important, the products are important, if you use code YouTube20, that's YouTube20, you get 20% off. And we're now doing free shipping with orders over $50 in the United States. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video.